What is up guys, welcome to Barden, my name is Heinrich, and today we're going to take a look at adding our ledge climb mechanic back into our player controller. The ledge climb essentially works the exact same way it did before, but with one major improvement, and that is that it no longer requires our platforms to line up with the grid. Now before we get started with our ledge climb, we quickly have to address a small bug from the previous episode. So let me quickly demonstrate. If we click on our player, and we take a look at our player data, we currently have our amount of jumps set to 1. But if I run the game, and then run up to a wall, and wall jump, whoops, and spam jump, I get a second jump. Now the reason for this is a small bug with our wall jump coyote time. So let's go ahead and open up our player in air state. So we come to substates, player in air state. So our problem lies within our do checks function. Over here we start our wall jump coyote time if we are no longer touching a wall, but we did just touch a wall. So when we leave our player in air state, we don't reset any of these variables back to false. Meaning when we come back into our player in air state, we immediately call the do checks function from our enter function. And then when it runs through this, it sees that our old is touching wall is still true. And so it starts our coyote time. So the way to fix this is in our exit function, we need to set our old is touching wall and old is touching wall back to false, and the same with our is touching wall and is touching wall back. So just old is touching wall equals false, old is touching wall back equals false, and then is touching wall equals false, and is touching wall back equals false. So if we save that and run the game again, this should no longer be an issue. As you can see, I can wall jump and spam jump as much as I want and we won't get a double jump. Perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to get started with our actual ledge climb. To begin with, let's take a look at our state machine diagram. As you can see, our ledge climb state is a standalone state, just like our player in air state. So we're gonna create this in our substates folder. We have two transitions coming to our ledge climb state. One is from our touching wall state, and another is from our player in air state. Both of these transitions are based on the exact same conditions, and that is just if we detect a ledge, we're going to transition to our ledge climb state. We then have one transition coming from our ledge climb state to our idle state, because when we finish our ledge climb, we're standing on top of the ledge, and our idle state is our entry point for our player grounded state. I'm actually missing a transition here because we have the option to drop from our ledge climb. So there's another transition going back to our player in air state. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's quickly talk about how the ledge climb actually works. So let's picture this. Our player currently has a ray cast from the center, so from this point here, being shot out towards our facing direction, so to the right. We use this to detect a wall. We're going to add another ray cast at the same X position, but a higher Y position around here, that's gonna shoot the same distance to the right or to the facing direction. This is going to be our ledge check. So what happens is, say our player is in a position like this, our wall check raycast is going to detect this platform over here, but our ledge check is going to detect nothing. This is how we know that there is currently a ledge that we can climb. What we're then going to do is save the position that the player was in when we detected the ledge, and then we're going to determine the X distance from our wall check position to the ledge, and then we're going to determine the y distance from our ledge check position downwards. We're going to use this information to determine what this corner position is. Once we know what this corner position is, we're going to have a starting position and an end position. We're going to hold the character in our starting position while our ledge climb animation runs, and when it finishes, we'll move the character to the ending position. Just like that. I hope that makes sense. If it does not, it should once we start programming it. And of course, if you don't understand something, you can always hop in the Discord and ask for some help. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is come to our substates folder and then create a new C sharp script and we'll just call it player ledge climb state. Let's go ahead and open that up. And seeing as our player ledge climb state isn't actually a substate of any other state, we're just going to inherit straight from our player state. We can also go ahead and get rid of this pre-generated code. And then let's go ahead and create our constructor. So we can right click on the name, quick actions and refactorings, generate constructor. There we go. The next thing we need to do is go set up the basics in our player script. So let's open that up. That is in our player folder, player finite state machine, player. We can come up to our state variables region and let's go ahead and create the variables. So public player ledge climb state, and we'll just call it ledge climb state. 
And then don't forget to give it the public getter and the private setter. And I see in our wall jump state, I accidentally said protected instead of private. Go ahead and fix that. And then next we can come down to our unity callback functions. And then in our awake function, we can initialize our ledge climb state. So ledge climb state equals a new player ledge climb state with this as our player, state machine as our state machine, player data as our player data. And then finally, our animation Boolean name is going to be ledge climb. And this time, instead of leaving it just as a ledge climb, we're going to add state at the end. And you'll see why once we start dealing with our animator. And the state machine should be with a capital S. And that should be all that we need to do in our callback functions. So next we can work on our transition to our player ledge climb state. So the first thing we need to do for that is create our actual ledge check. So let's go back to Unity and let's create another empty game object for the player. So create empty and just call it ledge check. As you can see, this is currently overlapping with our ground check. So we can just go ahead and move that up some around here. So let's just say 0 0.5. That should work. Next, we can come back to our player script. And then underneath our check transforms region, let's go ahead and create a variable for that. So we have a serialized field that holds a private transform. And we'll just call it ledge check. Go ahead and close down that. Now in our check functions, we essentially have the exact same function as for check if touching wall. So let's just declare that underneath that one. We'll say public bool check if touching ledge. And so this time we'll say return physics 2D dot raycast. And for our origin, this time we're going to use ledge check dot position. Our direction is vector two dot right multiplied with our facing direction. And then our distance is also player data dot wall check distance. And then finally, our layer mask is player data dot what is ground. Cool. So now we can check for our ledge. So now we can come to our player and air state. And let's go ahead and declare a boolean to store our ledge check. So we have private bool is touching ledge. And then we can go ahead and add that to our do checks. So after we check for is touching wall and is touching wall back, we'll say is touching ledge equals player dot check if touching ledge like that. So like I said, if our wall check returns true, but our ledge check returns false, we know there's a ledge that we can grab. Now, an important thing that we need to do is as soon as we detect a ledge, we need to save the position of the player so that we can determine the corner position. If we don't save it immediately and we do it somewhere else, there's a chance that our physics update might happen and move our character slightly. So our, our math isn't going to quite work out. So what we're going to do is come to our player ledge climb state. And we're just going to declare a private variable of type vector two, and we'll just call it detected position like that. We'll then come and create a public void function that will call set detected position. And this function is going to take in a vector two as a parameter. So vector two, and we'll just call it position. And all this function does is set our detected position equal to the position that we pass the function. So now back in our player in air state, after we've done the check for our ledge and wall, we will say if is touching wall and not is touching ledge. Then we want to set that position. So we'll say player dot ledge climb state dot set detected position. And we'll just set it to player dot transform dot position. So this is going to save the exact X and Y coordinates of the player when we detected the ledge. And this is going to be very useful. Now the last thing we need to do in our player and air state is set up the transition to our player ledge climb state. So let's come down to our logic update function. And just after our first if, we'll create another else if. And the conditions are the same. So is touching wall and not is touching ledge. 
then we want to say state machine dot change state to our player dot ledge climb state. Just like that. So we're basically done with our player in air state. Let's take a look at our player ledge climb state. Let's go ahead and generate our function overrides. So control full stop, generate overrides. We can deselect all and the only functions we want is our enter function, our exit function, our logic update function, and our two animation trigger functions. Go ahead and click OK, and there is everything that we need. So now that we know we're in our ledge climb state, we need to stop our character's velocity and freeze his position. So let's go to our player script, and in our set functions, let's create another set velocity function. And this is just going to be set velocity zero. I probably should have made this function a while back already. But it's just going to be public void set velocity zero. And it's not going to take any input parameters. And all this function does is set our x and y velocity to zero. So we say rb dot velocity equals vector two dot zero. And then we also just have to update our current velocity. So current velocity equals vector two dot zero. Now in our player ledge climb state, in the enter function, we can start off by calling that function. So player dot set velocity zero. And then next we set the position of our player. So player dot transform dot position equals detected position. So now we need to determine the corner of our ledge. So let's create another private vector too. And we'll call it corner position like that. Next, we're going to write a function that determines our corner position. And we're going to do that in our player script. So let's go ahead and come to our other functions. So our other functions region. And let's create a public function that is going to return a vector two. And this vector two is going to be the corner position. And we'll just call the function determine corner position. This function does not have any input parameters. So the first thing we need to do is determine our x distance. To do this, we're going to declare a raycast 2D or raycast hit 2D, and we'll just call it x hit. We'll then set this equal to physics 2D dot raycast. We're essentially just doing another wall check. So wall check dot position as our origin, vector two dot right multiplied with our facing direction as our direction, our player data dot wall check distance as our distance, and then finally player data dot what is ground as our layer mask. So this raycast is again going to check for the wall and we're going to have a raycast hit 2D object that we can now work with. From this object, we can then get our distance. So we'll say float x distance equals x hit dot distance. And this is going to return the distance from our raycast origin to the object that we detected, in this case, our uh, ledge, in this case, our platform. Next, we need to determine the y distance. So to do this, we're going to fire a ray downwards from our ledge check height, but move to the right our x distance. Let me actually quickly explain that a little bit better back in Unity. So let's just move our character back up to the ledge over here. So our raycast ledge is being fired out like this. And here is our x distance. What we're going to do is fire another ray from up here. But we're going to use this x distance to determine how far we should fire the ray down from. That means that this ray is also going to detect this ledge. And then we can determine this y distance. And like I said, we can then use this information to determine this corner position. Okay, so back in our script, we will say workspace dot set and our x we're going to set to x distance multiplied with our facing direction. So this way, we're either going to move left or right depending on the direction we're facing. And the y we're just going to set to zero, we don't need any y offset. Next, we can declare another raycast hit 2d. And we'll call this one y hit, we can then set this equal to physics 2d dot raycast. And this time our position is going to be ledge check dot position plus 
vector three multiplied with our workspace. So we're essentially just adding the x distance to our ledge checked opposition, but we have to cast it as a vector three, seeing as this is a vector three. Our direction is then going to be vector two dot down. And then as our distance, we're going to use the distance between our wall check and our ledge check. So we'll say ledge check dot position dot y minus wall check dot position dot y. And then finally, our layer mask is going to be player data dot what is ground. Now from this Raycast hit 2D, we can determine our y distance. So we'll just say float y distance equals y hit dot distance. Now finally, we can use this to determine the corner position and then return that as our vector two. So we'll say workspace dot set and our x position is going to be wall check dot position dot x plus our x distance that we measured multiplied with our facing direction. And then as our y, we're just going to say ledge check dot position dot y minus y distance. And that should give us the exact coordinate of the corner of this ledge. We can then go ahead and return our workspace. Perfect. So let's go ahead and come back to our player ledge climb state script. And in our enter function, let's set our corner position equal to player dot determine corner position. Now what we need to do is determine our start and stop positions for our ledge climb. Before we can do that in our player ledge climb state, we need to create two variables to hold offsets for our start and stop positions. So let's go ahead and open up our player data script. So in our data folder, player data, let's go ahead and create a header for our ledge climb state. So square bracket header, and we'll just call it ledge climb state. And we're going to have two public vector two variables. So public vector two, the first one is going to be our start offset. And the second public vector two is our stop offset. Okay, so we can come back to our player ledge climb state. And now we need to declare two more vector two variables. This is going to be for our start and stop positions. So private vector two, the first one is going to be our start position. And then we have another private vector to stop position. Back in our enter function, we can say start position dot set. And for our x, we're going to take our ledge corner position dot x and subtract our start offset. And for our x component, we're going to use our corner position dot x and either subtract or add our start offset depending on our facing direction. So we can just say corner position dot x minus, and then we can open up some brackets and say player dot facing direction multiplied with our player data dot start offset dot x. And so the reason we have minus over here is because if we're facing right, so facing direction is one, we want to subtract from our corner position. And if we're facing left, we want to add to our corner position. For our y component, we're going to say corner position dot y minus our player data dot start offset dot y. In this case, it's always going to be minus. Next, we can determine our stop position. So stop position dot set. And again, we're going to use corner position dot x. And this time, instead of minus, it's plus because if we're facing right, we want to move to the right. If we're facing left, we want to move to the left. And then we can open up some brackets again and say player dot facing direction multiplied with our player data dot stop offset dot X. And then for our Y component, it's again going to be corner position dot Y. And this time it's plus player data dot stop offset dot y. Just like that. After we've done this, we can go ahead and set our player's position to our start position. So player dot transform dot position equals start position. 
like that. And we can test this in just a second. All we need to do is come to our logic update function and again set our velocity to zero. So player dot set velocity zero and then set our position. So player dot transform dot position equals start position. Go ahead and save that and let's go to Unity and run the game and see if it works. Oops, okay, so we forgot to assign our ledge check variable. So let's go ahead and drag that in. And let's give it another try. Let's just maximize this. Awesome. So as you can see, the center of our player is being held right on that corner position. And we don't currently have any offset set, so it's just going to stay right there. Now, before we move on with our player ledge climb state, let's go ahead and work on the animations. So let's go ahead and pull up our animation window and then let's navigate to our player animation folder. So animations, player, and let's go ahead and create a new clip. For our ledge climb, we're going to have three different animations. We're going to have the grab component, the hold component, and the climb component. So let's just say for the first one, ledge grab, then let's create another clip this time we have ledge hold. And then finally, we have our ledge climb. We can then navigate to our sprites folder. So sprites, player, and here we have our ledge climb sprites. So we first want to work on our ledge grab animation. We can go ahead and change our sample rate to 10 and then drag in the first two sprites. Obviously, this isn't the smoothest animation, but it's the best that I could come up with. And of course, it also won't be repeating like this. It'll only happen once. So this is the grab portion of our ledge climb. Next, we have the ledge hold animation, which is just the second frame by itself. Awesome. And then finally, we have our ledge climb animation. So this is going to be sprite three, four, and five. We won't be using these last two sprites. We can also go ahead and change the sample rate to 10. And that's basically what it's going to look like. Of course, it looks really silly when it repeats like this, but oh well. So that's it for the animations. We can go ahead and close down our animation window. So let's take a look at our animator. If we click on our player, we can see our three new animations, but we can just go ahead and delete all three of them. Because instead of having all three animations here, we're going to use a substate machine for those three animations. So we can go ahead and right click, say create substate machine, click on it and just rename it to ledge climb. Let's just go ahead and reposition that. And now we need to set up some transitions. So we have to come and create a new Boolean parameter. And this time it's going to be called ledge climb state. Remember, this is what we passed to our constructor. Let's go ahead and drag that to the top and then make a transition from entry to ledge climb, click on it and set the condition to ledge climb state is true. We can then make a transition from our ledge climb to exit, click on that, and set our condition to ledge climb state is false. Perfect. Now, if we double click on ledge climb, it'll come to our substate machine. We can now create three new animation states for our grab, hold, and climb. So say right click, create state, empty, click on it, and just call it grab. Let's create another empty state machine or animation state and call it hold and then create one more and we'll just call it climb. Okay, let's just go ahead and position these things a little bit better. So when we enter our ledge climb substate machine, the first animation we want to play is our grab animation. So this initial transition is okay. From our grab animation, we're then going to go to our hold animation. And then finally, we can come to our climb animation. But we can also choose to not climb the ledge and instead drop down. So from hold, we can either transition to climb or directly to exit. So before we set up any of the transitions, we need to go ahead and add the animations for these states. So let's come to our player animations folder. Let's click on our grab state and get our ledge grab animation. Drag that up here. Then we can click on hold, drag in our ledge hold animation, and then finally our ledge climb animation. 
So our first transition is going to be from our grab state to our hold state. We can go ahead and click on the transition and open up our settings and set our exit time to one. We can then also change our transition duration to zero. So no matter what, the grab animation is going to play once and then we're gonna to transition to our hold animation. So we're going to stay in our hold state until our player gives our character input telling him to either climb or drop from the ledge. So we need to come and create another Boolean parameter. And this one is going to be called climb ledge. So this is the reason why the first parameter we named ledge climb state, just so that we didn't confuse these two. So we can go ahead and drag that to the top and then we'll make a transition from our hold state to our climb state. Click on it, untick has exit time, set the transition duration to zero, and then under conditions, just say climb ledge is true. We can then make another transition from our hold state to our exit state. Click on that, make sure to untick has exit time, set the transition duration to zero, and under conditions, instead of climb ledge, we're going to use our ledge climb state parameter and the condition is that that is false. We'll then make the same transition from our climb state to our exit state. Click on that. Untick has exit time. The transition duration is zero. And the condition is that ledge climb state is false. So while we're busy hanging on the ledge, if we press down, we're immediately going to drop. If we climb, we're going to climb. And then we're going to go to our idle state. So that is all set up. We can go ahead and test this out. Let's just go ahead and move the character down here again. Let's go ahead and run it. And so now if we grab a ledge, as you can see, we're busy in our hold animation. Again, our offsets are not set yet, but now that we have this animation, let's go ahead and mess with our offsets until we get what we want. So let's go ahead and open up our player data. And now these offsets are all going to be positive, seeing as we accounted for a left or right in the math itself. So just to start off with, let's set our start offset to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it's not, so our X offset seems about right, but our Y offset is not quite right. So let's try one for our Y offset. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so our Y offset is just about right, but our X is a little bit too much. I'm gonna change the X to 0 0.45, and the Y I'm gonna to change to 0 0.9. That's about right. I think we can probably change the X to 0 0.4, but you get the idea. This is how you're going to calibrate your offsets. We cannot test the stop offset yet. We'll get to that in just a second. But as you can see, everything is working fine. Okay, let's move on. So now once our character is hanging on the ledge, we wanna give the player the option to climb or drop from the ledge. To do this, we first need to know when is the character actually hanging. For this, we're going to use our animation trigger. So over here, we're going to let the state know that, okay, we're now currently hanging. So we first need to come and create a private Boolean that we're gonna call is hanging. We can then come to our animation trigger and just set that equal to true. We then need to come back to Unity and in our animation window, let's click on our player, open up our ledge grab animation and add an animation event at the end. And the function we're gonna call from this animation is our animation trigger function. So here, animation trigger. Now with this information, we'll know, okay, the character is hanging. You are free to read in the input to know if we should climb or drop. So let's come back to our script. And now we need to read in our X and Y input. So let's create variables for those as well. We have a private int X input, and then private int Y input. In our logic update function, let's go ahead and get those values. So X input equals player dot input handler dot normalized input X. And then y input equals player dot input handler dot normalized input y. 
So now, like I said, based on this input, we're either going to climb or drop from the ledge. So we need to create another Boolean that's going to keep track of if we're climbing the ledge or not. So private bool, and we'll just call it is climbing. And then we can come back down to our logic update function. And we'll just say, if our x input equals equals our player dot facing direction. So if we're hanging on a ledge, and we give x input away from the ledge, we don't want to start climbing the ledge only if we're giving x input towards the ledge. Um, we'll then say and is hanging. So we can't immediately start climbing if we're not yet hanging on the ledge. And we are not already climbing the ledge. So not is climbing. If all of this is true, we're going to set is climbing equal to true. And then we'll let our animator know to play the climbing animation. So player dot anim dot set bool. And the boolean we want to set is our climb ledge boolean. And we just want to set it to true. Now we need to account for our drop input. So we'll say else if y input equals equals negative one. So only if our y input is down and is hanging. And again, we are not climbing the ledge. So not is climbing. If all of these conditions are met, we'll say state machine dot change state to our player dot in air state because we're dropping from the ledge. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a try again. We're not yet done with this script, but we're just going to test everything so far. So if we're hanging on the ledge and we press S, we drop just like that. Perfect. Now, if we're hanging on the ledge and we press D, you can see the climb animation starts playing. I see we can mess around for offsets a little bit more. We'll do that in just a bit. Okay, but now we're just stuck in this climbing loop. We're not yet telling the script or telling the state that we are at the top of the ledge. For this, we're going to use our animation finish trigger. So back in our script, in our animation finish trigger function, we can just go ahead and say player dot anim dot set bool. And the boolean we want to set is our climb ledge bool again. And this time we're just setting it to false. Now this is just to make sure that next time we start the ledge climb, it doesn't automatically start climbing the ledge. This is just cleanup. Now to actually finish the ledge climb, it's we're going to come back to our logic update function. And we're going to say, if is animation finished, so this boolean automatically gets set to true whenever this function gets called, or sorry, this function gets called, we know that we are at the top of the ledge. So if this is true, we're just going to change to our idle state. So we'll say state machine dot change state to player dot idle state. After this, we're then just going to say else. And we're going to put everything else in there. Like that. So now we just need something to call our animation finish trigger. So let's go back to unity, click on our player so that we can look at the animations, and then come to our ledge climb animation, we can go ahead and add an animation event, drag it to the end. And this time the function we're going to select is our animation finish trigger. It's a shame that it's so far down. So here animation finish trigger. Awesome. So now our animation is going to let our state know that it's finished. The last thing we need to do is come to our exit function. And we'll say is hanging equals false. So that's just clean up for the next time we enter the state. And then we're going to say if is climbing. So in this case, we're exiting the state after we climb the ledge, we need to change our players position to our stop position. So player dot transform dot position equals stop position. And then we'll say is climbing equals false. So we need this if statement because we might exit the state when we drop from the ledge, in which case we don't want to change our position to our stop position. Let's go ahead and test this out. Awesome. So as you can see, we're leaving our ledge climb state, but because our stop offset is zero, we're just getting dropped on the ledge again, meaning we start the ledge climb again. So let's go ahead and mess with our stop offsets. So click on player, open up the player data. 
And let's just start with one one as our x and y offsets. Awesome. So as you can see, once we finish climbing the ledge, we end up up here. But obviously, this is these offsets are a bit too big. So let's go ahead and dial them down a little bit. Let's try 0 0.4 for the x and 0 0.75 for the y. That y might actually be a little bit too small. We will see. Oh, actually not. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. So as you can see, we can climb our ledge, we can drop, grab this ledge, climb it. Awesome. Now, let me show you something else with the new method of detecting the corner or determining what the corner position is. If we were to for some reason, just click on our grid and move our platforms around. So let's move it half down, half to the right. So now this corner position no longer uh, correlates with a like integer position. It's uh, going to be something like 4.5 or whatever. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it works perfectly now. Um, the reason it gives some issues is I've noticed whenever you change your tile map, it's a good idea to remove your tile map collider and your composite collider and just add them back on. For some reason, it it, it messes with with uh, with the physics sometimes. I I don't know why. <laughs> In my testing, this worked fine. And as you can see now, it works fine again. There's nothing wrong with it. Cool, so our new way of determining the corner position works a lot better than it did before. Let's go ahead and just reset our tile map. Save that. And we're basically done. The last thing we need to do is just set up our transition from our is touching wall state. So let's go ahead and open that up. Come to our player scripts, um, super state folder player is touching wall or player touching wall. And all we need to do is create another protected Boolean. And we'll say is touching ledge. We can then come to our do checks function and add that. So is touching ledge equals player dot check for ledge or check if touching ledge. And let me just move this up before I forget. Okay. And then in our do checks function, after we check for the ledge, we're going to say if is touching wall and not is touching ledge, then player dot ledge climb state dot set detection position to our player dot transform dot position. And then we just have to set up the transition itself. So in our logic update function at the end, we'll just say else if is touching wall and not is touching ledge state machine dot change state to player dot ledge climb state. So if we save this and try it out, we have our normal transition from our player and air state. If we drop down, hold control, so we start climbing the wall and then climb up to the ledge, you can see we grab it as expected. And there we go. That's our new and improved ledge climb uh, mechanic. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for waiting for this uh, after I dealt with sickness and exams. And before I go, I would just like to give a huge thank you to all of my supporters and wonderful people on Patreon and a huge special thank you to Binary Chef SA. Cody Lee, Pyro Says, and Miguel Gray for your support on Patreon. It means a lot, and you guys are awesome, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.